look at uh, 2017 number 6. So let f be the function defined in this way, and let g be the function differentiable. Uh, differentiable uh, function. Uh, the table above gives the values of g. Okay, and then g prime. Now h be the function whose graph consists of five line segments here. Okay. Now uh, find the slope of the line tangent of the graph of f at uh, x equals pi. So then we need to figure out the value of y and then the slope. So let's try to look at the first derivative first. All right, so we just need to find the slope. So first derivative here. Uh, I'm just going to do that over here right in the corner. A, f prime, we realize that is equal to cos derivative of cosine of 2x. So we get 2. Uh, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I have negative sine of 2x plus derivative of sine becomes cosine, so we have cosine in the front and times e to the sine of x. Now if you plug in uh, pi for x, then sine of 2 pi becomes 0. So here we get x equals pi then first component becomes 0. Cosine of pi becomes negative 1. So we get negative 1 times e to the 0 power, which is equal to negative 1. So that's how we can figure out the value of a, uh, part a. Part b, uh, let k be the function defined in this way. k of x is this way. What is k prime of pi? So as you can tell, uh, what we get to realize is b. I'm going to write I'm going to do the solution B over here. K prime of x is equal to first, we got to do the derivative of outer function, h prime of f of x times f prime of x. But the fact that x equals pi then what we end up getting is h prime of f of pi times f prime of pi. But we realized that f prime of pi was equal to uh, negative 1 already. And then what is f of pi? We have to figure that out first. Uh, if you have to plug in a uh, pi in place of uh, x, on the side f of pi we have cosine of 2 pi which is equal to 1 sine of pi is equal to 0 so we get plus e to the 0 power which is equal to 2 so this now becomes h prime of 2 times negative 1 but what is h prime of uh, 2 so 2 is right over here that's the graph of h and then you can see that slope is equal to negative one third. You see it's down by one over three, but going down. So we get uh, our final answer is negative one third times negative one, which simply becomes positive one third. That would be part B. Let's look at part C. Let m be the function in this way, find m prime of two. So then in this case, what we're gonna be doing is m prime of x we have to use the product rule. So first, g prime of the inside. But by the chain rule, I gotta multiply by negative two on the outside times h of x plus g of negative two x times h prime of x. Now we have to plug in two. So then when x equals two, what we end up getting is negative 2 g prime of negative 4 times h of 2 plus g of negative 4 and then h prime of 2. And then there are a couple of values that we already found. Uh, g, uh, so what we end up getting is negative 2 was there, g prime of negative 4. g prime of negative 4 is negative 1 here, you can see that. And then h of 2, 
h of 2 is somewhere in the middle. You can see that uh, it's going down by one third. So we, when we go over 2, then we have we already down by 2 thirds. So we get negative 2 thirds. Plus g of negative 4. g of negative 4 is 5 here. And then h prime of 2, we figured it out as uh, negative 1 third earlier. And when you combine them together, we get negative uh, 4 third minus 5 over 3. What we end up getting is negative 3. All righty. Let's look at part D. Is there a number C in the closed interval where G prime of C is equal to negative 4? Now, this, uh, this one looks like a mean value theorem. But first, in order for mean value theorem to work, G, uh, the function G has to be uh, continuous and differentiable. So let's look at it. Function g said differentiable function, which implies a continuity. So then that portion is good. So negative 5 to negative 3. Negative 5 to negative 3. So then I'm looking at right over here. Let's try to find the slope at the end point. So g of uh, negative 3 minus g of negative 5 over negative 3 minus negative 5. Let's look at that. Negative 3, here's 2 minus 10 over 2, which is equal to negative 4, oh, which matches right over here. So we get to realize that by mean value theorem, there is at least one C where greater than negative five, less than negative three, uh, F G prime of C is equal to negative four, same as what's given here. Alrighty, so with that one, I'm gonna close it for number six. I'll see you later, bye.